One of these men is an inventor of new cocktails. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Joe Gilmore. My name is Joe Gilmore. My name is Joe Gilmore. Only one of these men is the real Joe Gilmore. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Robin Bain, Donna Meachie, and Betty White on to tell the truth. And here sitting in for Bud Collier is the star of Player Hunch, Merv Griffin. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here. To Tell the Truth is brought to you this week by Arrowax, made with natural wax for a shine that mops back naturally, Arrowax. Well, panel, I always get a great kick out of watching you at home. It's a pleasure to be among the living here tonight. I'm sure we're going to give you a good time, and particularly a rough time. They promised me that. Robin, I understand this is your first time on the panel. I'm right with you, Merv. Good. I'm first time We're together. Over here. We'll sink together. We'll lean together, I can <laughs> promise you that. So, panel, please open your envelope, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along as I read. I, Joe Gilmore, am a bartender. I have mixed drinks for such people as President de Gaulle, Bing Crosby, Sir Winston Churchill, Cary Grant, and many others. To honor important people and events, I often create special cocktails. Among these have been the Missouri Mule, the Royal Arrival, Four Score, and the Abbey Bells. I'm here in the United States to pick up new ideas for drinks that I can take back to England. I am the head bartender in the famous American bar of the Savoy Hotel in London. Signed, Joe Gilmore. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Joe Gilmore, master mixer. So let's start the questioning with, and for no particular reason, Betty White. <laughs> Well, I was your favorite until then. Thanks a lot, Merv. Look, I am. <laughs> Number one, uh, what is a vermouth cassis? It's a dry vermouth and cassis. Uh, number two, what is the cassis part? The cassis is the mixer. Uh, number three, what is a red snapper? Red snapper uh, is a cinzano uh, uh, with a gin. Number one, what is a red snapper? I don't know. Number two, do you know? It's a fish as far as I know. I, don't think it's a... <laughs> I can't quarrel with you there. Number three, how many stories in the, in the uh, Savoy Hotel in London? Well, there are two levels. There's the new building and the old building. And altogether, there must be about 12. Each section is about eight stories high. Thank Tom you. Poston. Thank you, Murph. We're in this together, boy. <laughs> number one, what is falernum? I don't know. Do you know number two? No, I don't. Number three, do you know what falernum is? That's no. funny. Uh, number one, how far is the entrance of the old Savoy from the street? Well, oh, about uh, 200 yards. Number two, do you agree with that? About the same, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, what is the street? that the, the Savoy entrance is on, the old Savoy? Uh, the old Savoy is on the embankment. Number two, is that correct? Yes, the old Savoy. I, you're probably thinking of the Strand sign. Thank you. Number three, Robin? Uh, number one, where do you get your ideas for new drinks? They just come to me. Number two, how do you get your ideas? They're invented. Number three? Well, I'm in the American bar, and I study the tastes of uh, Americans, principally, and Germans, certain other continentals who uh, frequent my bar, more than uh, English people do on some occasions. Uh, number two, what is a pink lady made out of? A pink lady is made of grenadine, and gin is the prime base. And what's the pink part? The pink part's the grenadine. Don Amici. Uh, number one, what is the name of the Bartenders Association in Europe? 
Uh, the United Kingdom Bartenders Guild. The United Kingdom? Bartenders Guild. I'm talking about for, the, for all of Europe. Uh, I'm not quite sure. You wouldn't know. Uh, number two, would you know the uh, chief barman at the Georges Sank in Paris? At the Georges Sank, I believe, is René Lambert. He's would you know friend. number three? Do you agree with that? Uh, I don't remember. Number one? Uh, Rudolph. Uh, number uh, uh, two, uh, the back of the Savoy Hotel is on what? Back's on, on the, the what? Um, Victoria Embankment. Uh, number three, is 53 a real good year in Champagne? Not uh, especially. Number, uh, number one is... Time's up, panel. If nothing else tonight, we've discovered what you know about good booze. <laughs> Time to vote. And I might say without consultation, mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Ballots all marked. Everybody made a decision. Don, are you cogitating or have no, you? No, I've, uh, I've, you've I've made already your marked. Yes, right. thank you. Always Tom? I'm the one. I voted for number two. As you can easily see, I changed it. I, I did, but I couldn't believe that the Strand, uh, that the Savoy, the street the Savoy entrance was on was the embankment, and uh, that's what made me vote for number two, because he seemed to be right in his other answers. Robin, what's your vote? Well, I voted for number one, uh, merely because I think he has the friendliest face, and it's also a little bit red, and I think most bartenders have red faces. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don Amici, who do you think is the real one? I voted for uh, number one because he was the only one that knew the uh, chief barman's name at the Georgia Sank in Paris. And Betty White, your vote? I voted for number one. I don't have the regular thing. Somebody must be having two sets of them. But I voted for number one on the strength of his, his answers didn't sound like things that you'd make up. They sounded like truthful answers, but I'm taken in very easily. Well, the minds seem to be made up here. All the votes are in. And now, that moment where we find out which one of these three gentlemen is head bartender at the American Bar of the Savoy Hotel in London. So... Will the real Joe Gilmore please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, Joe Gilmore. Uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? Yes, my name is Walter Root. I'm the director of group sales, embassy tours, Times Square, New York. And number three, how about you, sir? My name is uh, Richard Yates, and I'm in charge of distribution for GSM Delta cars in America. Well, there's only been one incorrect vote, which means a total of $250 from Arawax. And on your way out, gentlemen, there's a gift box of fine products from the makers of Arawax for each one of you. Thank you very much, and good night to you. Thank you, Bob. Right now, a word about the protection of your floors. Scuff it. Yes, you can scuff it. Spill on it. Yes, you can spill on it. Track dirt on it. Track dirt on it, too. Wipe, then buff, and the lasting shine comes back. It's new Arawax. Even with roughest wear, the Arawax shine lasts longer by far than other leading brands. Lasts longer by far because only Arawax has the lasting shine formula that shines back through roughest wear. Keeps a longer lasting shine that will not yellow floors. The shine lasts longer, yet new Arawax costs one-fourth less than other leading brands. You save 23 cents a quart on new Arawax. Saves money, saves work. Remember, you can scuff it, spill on it, track dirt on it, too. Wipe then buff, and the Arawax shine comes back. Get Arawax. The shine lasts longer by far, yet Arawax costs one-fourth less. You save 23 cents a quart over other leading brands. Here we go, panel. Now let's have our next team of challengers.
What is your name, please? My name is Nancy Hogan. My name is Nancy Hogan. My name is Nancy Hogan. Panel, please listen while I read this affidavit. I, Nancy Hogan, work in Washington and have the rather confusing title of administrative assistant to a special assistant to the President of the United States. While my duties sometimes include borrowing pictures from the Smithsonian Institute and helping to redecorate the cabinet room, my main function is being Girl Friday to the President's cabinet. I notify the members of the meeting schedule, assemble material for the meeting, and coordinate the agenda. I have my own office in the White House. To me, one of the most unusual things about my position is that it is the first steady job I have ever held. Signed, Nancy Hogan. A panel of these three very attractive ladies claim to be Nancy Hogan, Girl Friday to the Cabinet. So let's start the cross-examination with the Don Amici. Thank you very much, uh, Merv. Number one, who sits to the right of the president in the meetings? Dean Rusk. Uh, number uh, two, who sits to the left of the president? Uh, McNamara, Defense, Secretary of Defense McNamara. Uh, number three, what is your salary? I prefer not to say. Number one, what is your salary? I don't think I should say. You, number two, you... Uh, I cannot say. You, you cannot say. Uh, number, uh, uh, number two, what is uh, Mr. Rusk's first name? Dean Rusk. Uh, number three, how often do, you, do the cabinet meetings uh, take place? Once a week, generally. Uh, number one, what are Mr. Ribikoff's, uh, what, is he secretary of what? Health, education, and welfare. Uh, number two, who is uh, secretary of, uh, of labor? Uh, Mr. Goldberg. Uh, I'm sorry, Don. Betty? You're not half as sorry as I am. <laughs> Number three, who is the Secretary of the Interior? Mr. Udall. And his first name, number one, please? Stewart. And number two, what is his home state? Uh, I would not know. Number three, do you know? Kansas. And number one, do you know? Arizona. Uh, number two, how many full cabinet meetings has President Kennedy held since he took office? January 20th. He will have his fifth on Friday. And number three, do you agree with that? He had his fifth today. Number one, I'm just curious, how come this is the first steady job you've ever held? Well, I just graduated from college, and previously I just worked for the campaign. So Which start at the top really... and work your way down. <laughs> Tom? Thank you, Merv. Number one, did your job require any special training? No, it didn't. Number two, uh, is, is that, do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Number three? Yes, I is do. It, number three, uh, have you, who preceded you? Who preceded me? In, uh, in, under, under President Eisenhower? Um, there was no one. With, my boss was not there under President Eisenhower. <laughs> I would expect that, I guess. What's the, what's the matter? Didn't he help him in the campaign? <laughs> Number two, have you ever seen the rocker? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, who makes that rocker? Do you know Number two? A company in South Carolina. Number one? I'm sorry, Tom. Time's up. Robin Bain? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> What is uh, the shape, number one, of the table in the cabinet room? Well, it's an odd shape. It's sort of oblong and hexagon. It's wide at its side and narrow. And number two, how many chairs are there surrounding this table? There are 13. Number three, who is the Secretary of Defense? McNamara. And where is he from, number three? He's from Illinois. Uh, number two. What is Mr. Kennedy's, President Kennedy's, middle name? Fitzgerald. The bells are ringing, panel. And once again, it's time to vote. No consultation, please. Mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. Have you all marked? I haven't. I have to wait until all ballots are marked here. Everybody set and ready? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Oh, I voted for number three, and I had to look myself. I forgot what I wrote down on there. I, I voted for number three. As you can see, my reasons aren't too good. But uh, uh, <laughs> is it too late to change? <laughs> That's as good a reason as any. Robin, your vote went to? 
Well, I voted for number one for the same reason that Tom voted for number three. Very good reason. <laughs> Don, you must have a reason. No, uh, uh, <laughs> actually, the only reason, well, uh, number three, I thought, gave a couple of incorrect answers. Number one seemed to be uh, the most familiar with all the things that I know about this thing called cabinet meetings in Washington, which isn't very much, I'm afraid. Betty White. Merv, thank you. I voted for number one on the strength of Mr. Udall's home state, which is Arizona. Huh? All right. The votes are in. Decisions are made. So now, once again, comes the moment. And we'll see which one of these three ladies is the real girl Friday to the cabinet. Will the real Nancy Hogan please stand up? Thank you, Nancy. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? I'm Frances Jackson. I'm a senior at Sarah Lawrence College in New York, Bronxville. And number three, how about you? My name is Ann Vaya, and I'm secretary to Kyle Rode, co-captain of the New York football giants. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes. Why does a professional football player need a secretary? Because he's sports director at WNAW Radio in New York. I see. I had visions of you running down the field with him. <laughs> Well, let me see. There was only one incorrect vote, again, which means a total of $250 from Arrowax. And on your way out, ladies, there's a gift box of fine products for the makers of Arrowax for each of you. Thank you very much, and good night to you. Thank you. Right now, here is a message of interest if you've ever had acid indigestion or heartburn. Thank heavens I saw my doctor. I thought I had an ulcer. It was only acid indigestion. I've learned my lesson. I'm going to help protect my stomach lining with these Bicidol mints. Bicidol medication not only relieves acid indigestion fast, Bicidol actually coats and soothes irritated stomach lining to help protect against further acid flare-ups. Important, no mere alkalizer mint coats to help protect like Bicidol mints. And now a word about sleepies. Don't lie awake again tonight. Take new Sleepy's tablets. Next thing you know, it's morning. Sleepy's reported in a leading medical journal, effective as phenobarbital, yet so safe. No drug habit, no drug hangover. When your wake center is active, you can't sleep. Medically proved Sleepy's turns off the wake center, brings on sleep. You close your eyes, next thing you know, it's morning. Sleepy's effective as phenobarbital, yet so safe. No drug habit. Now let's have our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Arthur Maxwell. My name is Dr. Arthur Maxwell. My name is Dr. Arthur Maxwell. Panel, please listen while I read this affidavit. I, Dr. Arthur Maxwell, have recently returned from the scene of a most unusual scientific experiment. From a specially built barge off the Mexican island of Guadalupe, in water 12,000 feet deep, a group of scientists and oil well drillers bored a hole underwater into the crust of the earth. The experiment is called Project Moho and will provide new evidence of the history of the earth and its internal composition. We have drilled deeper toward the center of the earth than man has ever probed before. Signed. Dr. Arthur Maxwell. All right, panel. These three gentlemen all claim to be Dr. Arthur Moho, um, Dr. Arthur Maxwell of Project, of Project Moho. So we'll start with Tom Mo, uh, Poston. Poston. Thank you, Mo. <laughs> Uh, number three, what is the most interesting specimen you have brought up so far? The basalt rock from the bottom of the ocean. That's the most interesting. Number two, what is the uh, composition of your drill point? It was diamonds. In what? 
was diamond set in steel. Have you ever, number two, have you ever had to change that point? Yes, we lost uh, two of them opposite La Jolla, <laughs> and they had to be replaced. It, was that where the drilling took place? No, originally we made two tries opposite La Jolla, and we lost some drills, and then we moved south to Guadalupe. Uh, number one, is the project completed? No, it isn't. This is the, merely the uh, engineering phase of the project. When, who are the, uh, what's the name of the laborers? What do you call the laborers that help you on this project? What are they called? Well, the laborers, uh, in this instance, were oil well people, and they're called uh, roughnecks. Robin? Uh, number one, what is the center portion of the earth called? <clears throat> well, it's not known for certain exactly what the composition is. However, it is called a core. And it's thought to be uh, composed of uh, molten rock and uh, nickel. Uh, number two, who is, uh, or who or what was the Moho project named after? Uh, it was a Yugoslavian named something like Mohorovicic. <laughs> What else? Uh, number three, how far down is Moho? Moho is about six miles below the ocean surface. And number three, why don't you drill from the continent rather than from the water? Uh, because under the continent, you would have to drill about three times as deep. I see. Don, uh, number three, who is the sponsor of this project? The uh, National Science Foundation was the sponsor. Uh, number uh, uh, two, what is the size of the pipe you used? Well, they're about 60 feet long and about, about that big around. In other words, what, uh, and number one, what inch pipe is it that you uh, sink down into the, the diameter? Air? I think four inch. Pardon? pardon me? Four inch. Four, four inch. Number three, would you uh, agree with that? Uh, yes, I'd say it's about four inch. Four inch pipe. Uh, number three, who makes the drill that you use in, in, these, in these experiments, these drilling? Uh, the Christensen Diamond Company. Uh, number two, how much do you drill a day? How many feet? Oh, they made about uh, 300 feet a day. Uh, number one, what is the least number of feet ever made in a day? In what, under what particular Drilling, uh, drilling into the earth. In the earth or in yeah. water? Well, you don't drill in the water, do you? This particular project we did. Well, I I'm talking, you, you drilled into the earth, did you not, underneath the water? Yes, that's correct, yes. Yeah, uh, what's the least number of feet into, into that that you drilled in one day? Well, approximately, uh, uh, if it's solid rock, it uh, would be approximately a, maybe a foot per hour. Yeah. What, uh, 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 Betty? Thank you, Merv. Number three, when you broke uh, the bit, as number two said you did, how did you go about going on with the drilling? How did you mark where you had been drilling? Uh, we just brought the whole works back and started over again. We just lost everything at that number time. Number two, how did you mark the spot where you had been drilling? We just pulled up and moved on. Moved on. You didn't go back drilling in that same position again? No, because this was just an experiment. Number one, what did you do about going back to, to drill? If you had gotten down so many feet and then had to pull a bit out, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to have to start all over again, would you? That's a good question. I like yeah. that one. Uh, in, this, in this particular case, it would have been necessary to uh, start all over again. Why? The bells are ringing, my friends, and it's once again time to vote. So please mark your ballots for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Have all made your decision? Yes. All right. Tom Poston, for whom did you vote? Number three. Uh, I like the answers that he gave, although I must say that they were all very well coached, as usually the contestants are. But I thought it was number three. Robin? Well. I voted for number three, too. I must admit, number two looks more like a scientist, but number three looks like he's been out uh, in the sun, so I guess I'll vote for number three. Don? I voted for number three also, uh, Merv, principally because I thought, uh, I thought his answers sounded the most sincere to the questions that, that, uh, that, uh, that we asked of him, which I'm sure were not very intelligent. And Betty? Well, I don't care which one it is. I think the whole concept of this experiment is about as fascinating, as, is just as fascinating as the outer space thing. And I read that when they broke a bit, they had to start all over again because there was no way of, of marking where they were drilling. And that, number one came as close to answering that as anybody. I hope it's number one. <laughs> the votes are in. I see you've all made your minds up. 
And now let's find out which one of these three gentlemen is the real scientist with Project Moho. So, will the real Dr. Arthur Maxwell please stand up? <laughs> I got scared, too, for a minute there. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, sir? My name is Donald McNeese. I am a stockbroker with Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Leonard Smith. <laughs> Number two. I'm Dr. Lincoln Harder, Vice President, Wagner College, Staten Island. <laughs> well, once again, there's only been one incorrect vote, which means a total of $250 from Arrowax. And on your way out, gentlemen, a gift box for each one of you of fine products from the makers of Arrowax. Thank you very much and good evening to you. <laughs> the panel, I promised you a rough time tonight, but you gave us a rough time. You did mighty well. And I might add here that Robin Bain, for your first time on To Tell the Truth, you got all correct answers. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice job. Panel, it's once again time to say good night, and I thank you all for being so kind. I think Robin's disgusting. <laughs> Wait a minute. Right. Here, here, girls. The program is to tell the truth. So thank you all. Good night to you, panel. Thank you, Merv. For this is Merv Griffin saying good night for Arawax, and I'll see you all tomorrow on Play Your Hunch, incidentally. And as Bud Collier always says, what does Bud Collier always say? <laughs> Hello, panel, and how are you? To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production. The name in our mailbox is Porter. To our friends, we're Pete and Gladys. And we're at home next on most of these stations. Drop in. Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Bicidol Powder to settle acid upset stomach and relieve acid indigestion. Johnny Olson saying good night from To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.